branches fall seven times, they rise again. it can be really 
do. So not everyone deals with it. it it's not just a, you know, sad mood. It's something that's sort of chronic and continues to happen. And I just want to say that even though we're Christians, even though we're saved, that doesn't stop the depression from coming. And if you suffer from depression as a Christian, please don't question your faith in God or think that you've done something wrong or feel ashamed. I have been a Christian 38 years and I still deal with depression. It doesn't have to do with your faith or the strength of your faith. In this world, the Bible says we will have tribulation, but we can be of good cheer because God overcame the world. So, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trials that you face. That's another quote from scripture. Things will happen. The enemy will prey upon us. We're in human bodies. So I just want you to know that it's okay. It's okay if you feel depressed. It's okay if you struggle with depression. It's okay and you're not alone. You are not alone. I have found personally that the best way for me to overcome depression is to sort of, even though I don't feel like doing things, force myself to get out of bed and get out of the house. Um, the sooner the better. If you just get up, take a shower, go out on your patio, or I find it that a drive is better. Go somewhere where you can be around people for a little while. That's my top piece of advice. Of course, we pray and we read the Bible and things like that, but I'm talking about practical application. Those who do not deal with depression may not understand that. Sometimes we need practical pieces of advice on top of just trust God or read the Bible and pray. That seems to be the pat answer that Christians like to throw out, read the Bible and pray, but the practical things we can do can also help us in our depression. So getting outside is a big one. Now sometimes I can't even do that. Sometimes I just don't have it in me to get out of bed and it's, you know, on the link to admit that, but there are times where I just need to stay in bed and read my Bible and let the depression sort of run its course, trying really hard to fight against it is sometimes futile. I have just learned to accept the fact that I deal with depression, that depression comes from time to time, and to let it run its course because it does always run its course. The last bout of depression I had was recent. It was maybe two weeks ago, and I've shared on Instagram as well times where I feel the depression coming on, but the last bout I had was a few weeks ago, and I remember when it came, I was just like, this is never gonna pass. It lasted for maybe a week, and then I woke up, and I was okay, and I was like, ready to get back to work, and my mind frame was back to normal, if you will. So it does have a span of time. It's not forever. So just the biggest thing, don't be ashamed. If you have depression, if you deal with depression, depression and anxiety are two huge factors in our society in this day and age. So, like I said, you're not alone and there's no reason to feel condemned. God does not condemn you. It says in the Bible that God is near to the brokenhearted. God has a very tender heart for you when you're suffering. So take comfort in that. Let's talk about anxiety now. Like I said, when I first met my husband and he uh, talked to me about how he's always dealt with anxiety, I didn't really understand it at first because I never dealt with it before. But as I got older, I myself started struggling with anxiety and I started to recognize that I had always struggled with anxiety in some form. Like depression, anxiety can also be mild to severe. You can get anxious from time to time. That's normal. We all get anxious. 
chest and then it can be more severe to where I have one friend that has trouble eating in front of people uh, she won't go to public places and it's hard for her to take communion in a public place because for some reason the anxiety just creeps in again nothing to be ashamed about I myself deal with anxiety I have always dealt with social anxiety while I love people and love to meet new people I am not comfortable in large groups of people in the classroom setting it was very difficult for me and I didn't know why really until I was older I just thought I was weird or out of place yes all kids have trouble with oral reports and getting in front of the class you can get nervous but just the general feeling I would get in a classroom I was just on edge I felt very uncomfortable and I still do some people will say that the more you put yourself out there the more you put yourself in that position the better it gets but honestly that hasn't worked for me it's just something I have to accept that I have I actually chose the college I was going to partially because I thought I would have to do less presentations and be around less people if I went to that college turns out there were tons of presentations probably more than usual at my college and let me share with you two really hard situations that I went through in college so I went to a two-year design school so we were constantly presenting our projects and one of the classes that I had when I went to give my presentation afterwards I actually felt like I was going to pass out and basically the whole class was asking me if I was okay and then I'll never forget this my very last class in college it was my last class of my entire college experience I had to give an oral presentation in the class and I got so sick to my stomach from the anticipation of it that I told the teacher that I couldn't do it and that I wasn't feeling well and actually ended up basically running away from that presentation I just went home and it was sort of anticlimactic because it was my last class at college and I felt really sad that I couldn't do it but like I said sometimes we can't force ourselves to change or force ourselves to become better sometimes putting ourselves in that position doesn't necessarily mean we're going to overcome it in the bible paul had a thorn in the flesh we don't necessarily know what that thorn in the flesh was many scholars believe it was an eye issue a problem with his eyes but he asked the lord to remove the thorn several times i believe three times and god said no my grace is sufficient for you so sometimes we are just left to deal with these things and they're not necessarily going to become better sometimes we just have to accept that we struggle with these things and be okay with it and now I'm okay with the fact that I deal with that when I'm in big groups of people I know how I'm going to get so I try not to put myself in that position and if I'm forced to be in that position I just do the best I can and call upon God but there's nothing to be ashamed about and I just want you to know by sharing those stories that you're not alone you're not strange you're not different and in fact I think many people struggle with these things and don't discuss it or don't admit it so don't base it off that but anxiety can take several forms for me social anxiety for my friend anxiety regarding eating in front of people for my husband it was just always an anxiety about his life and um, some people have an anxiety about death and to think about it at a really young age 
we all have different things that we struggle with. So let's talk about hope and how to keep hope alive and how to overcome these situations even if we can't overcome the actual thing we're struggling with. So like I said in the Q&A I did a few days ago, hope is sort of a discipline. Hope doesn't necessarily come easily. It's not something we always feel strongly. It's not something that necessarily comes naturally. Hope is something that we choose and we can choose to hope in our circumstances. So to keep hope alive, we choose to hope. We choose to believe that if we're struggling, God will help us. We choose to believe that God won't allow more than we can handle. And if something is really difficult, he'll provide a way of escape or a way for us to deal with the situation. We choose to accept the hand we've been dealt. We choose to accept it because we know that God is in control and we believe in God's providence. And we do the best we can with what we have, whether that means going to the doctor, maybe taking medication, maybe just learning to live with what we have to deal with. We do what we can and then we let God do the rest. There's no real secret in keeping hope alive. Hope is a byproduct of the faith that we have in God and that grows with time and as God solidifies our faith through our relationship with him. So it's a process and it's not something that can really be forced. Now that being said, I do encourage you, if you're going through a hard time, of course, read your Bible and pray. And sometimes the only prayer that I can get out is help. So if that's all you can pray, then the Holy Spirit will make intercession. Jesus knows what you feel and think before you even say anything. So you don't have to put a show on for him. Just say, help. Lord, I need help. Lord, I'm struggling. And allow him to comfort you. Also remember, what you're going through may be allowed into your life because God wants to use that to help someone else down the line. So whenever I've struggled with something, I always have had a really empathetic heart towards people with that same struggle. I'm drawn to people that struggle with the same things as me. And I long to encourage other people that struggle with the same things as me. So you can be a comfort to other people with what you've gone through. We're not here just for ourselves. We're not here for our life to be perfect and comfortable. We're here for a purpose, a specific purpose that God has for us. And going through trials strengthens our faith, strengthens us as people, and positions us to encourage others that struggle with the same thing. Maybe someone that is not as strong as you that may think of committing suicide because they can't deal with their depression, but because you've been there and you've struggled with depression, God brings you into that person's life at a certain time, and little do you know you end up helping to save them. You know, you never know. And wouldn't it be worth it for you to go through your own set of hard circumstances if it meant that you could help somebody else less fortunate than you? So remember that when you're struggling and use that pain to reach out to others because that's what we're here for. We're here to help and encourage others and we're here to draw others to God so we can, you know, use our tough circumstances and share about our tough circumstances and how God has helped us through them and how God equips us to get through them. We have tools that the world does not have to help us and we should share those with others. We cannot live our lives trying to live up to the way people view us. We can't live our lives trying to impress other people or not disappoint other people. We have to stop caring so much what people think 
and trust me, I speak to myself on this, we have to listen to our own convictions and not the projected convictions of others. If someone is condemning us about our depression or anxiety or about anything, then we may need to have boundaries with that person because it's not our place to judge others and to condemn others for things we struggle with or things other people struggle with. And we have to learn to be wise in our interactions with people. Instead of taking what everyone says as solid, we have to weed through the comments and we have to only allow things to affect us that are from God. So, like Job in the Bible, his friends did not offer him good, sound advice when he needed it. They were condemning towards him. And if that's the sense you get from someone, then you may need to have boundaries with them. You don't need that. And we don't need to live our lives trying to please others. And we don't need to prove ourselves to God. So take that burden off yourself. You do the best you can. And... Like I said, you trust God for the rest. At the end of the day, it's not other people dealing with what you're dealing with. It's you. And you know what you're going through and need to call upon God to show you the way, not others. Because other people are fallible and they may not have good advice for you. I read in a book the other day, go to people that celebrate you. You know, be around people that encourage you and that want to hear about you and your life and your struggles and aren't there to condemn you or preach at you or something like that. Go to people that want to celebrate you. There's a specific verse in the Bible that God is bringing to mind and it says, shake the dust off your feet. So that kind of means if someone is not going to accept you and someone is fighting against you, then you need to kind of just move on. You don't need to surround yourself with people that bring you down or condemn or discourage you. So use wisdom and uh, surrounding yourself with people that are edifying to you and not degrading or discouraging. Remember that your convictions are your own and nobody gets to project their convictions on you. So listen to what God speaks into your life, not what others speak into your life. So if you're dealing with depression or anxiety or struggling to keep hope alive, I just want you to know again that I empathize with you. God cares about what you're going through and you are not alone. So, do the best you can, trust in God, and choose hope, and we'll get through this together. So, thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. I hope this helped you, and if you want to talk about anything else regarding depression or anxiety or hope, please leave comments in the comment section, and I would love to talk with you about that. Until next time, my friends, love and blessings to you. And bye for now.